Well, my room was like the hangout room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had my friend living with me in my room too. Oh my God. I told my friend, I was like, hey, I'm going to be in Detroit. I heard you move there. And he's like, yeah, totally. You need to ride from the airport. I'm like, yeah. So he picks me up at the airport and he's like, like, he drops me up at the hotel. I was like, so what are you saying? He's like, this, this chair looks good. Hi. Hey, Olivia, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for pushing a little bit for me to get my car fixed. I appreciate oh, that. Don't cry. Is that what it was? It was a car. Issue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my windshield like cracked and I thought that people were coming yesterday and I was oh. waiting all day. And then I called them like, where are you guys? And they're like, no, it's for Thursday. I'm like, it is Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's like a windshield replacement. Uh-huh. So well, they just like, that's a problem here. driving with a busted windshield, right? Yep. Apparently you can get pulled over. I didn't. I heard about that before getting my car to like figure that out. But yeah. So I appreciate you pushing a little. Oh yeah. No problem. Got to get that fixed. How did it even happen? I mean, I'm curious. Is something hit it or what? I don't know. So what I think is that like while driving, I do remember hearing like something smack like a pebble or something, Uh Ah, yeah. but I didn't see anything. And then the other day, me and my boyfriend got in the car and he's like, you have a crack in your windshield. I was like, what? And it was like this, it was like eight inches. Whoa. So it was like pretty big. And I, it seems like it must have sort of cracked and then it expanded. Yeah, with like that's probably what happened. Cold. Wow. So yeah. small problem turned into a big one quickly, you know? Yeah, talk about metaphors. So. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? How's everything? I'm good. I'm doing really well. Um just hanging in there during, you know, pandemic life. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like, can yeah. you believe it's been like a year almost like we're almost coming up like on a year anniversary. This has been the craziest thing. It feels like three centuries, you know? Yeah. It's really insane. And like watching things from like pre pandemic of like, you're just sort of like Jersey shore. I've been <laughs> right. watching a lot of that. And it's just sort of like, you're like, Oh, this, how are you doing that? Oh, you just like, dancing with random people at the club and making out and grabbing right. this and grabbing that and like you know it's like we have like a ptsd almost from like it's crazy it's it's children. crazy how, how the mindset has changed and everything you know yeah <laughs> in just one year where are you currently at um i'm in los angeles how about yourself chicago nice nice yeah. i have a bunch of friends out there Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's finally warming up. God, this is almost the last of snow is melting. So we got to awesome. hit hard. Well, I hopefully do... it's not like an Indian summer. Isn't that what that is? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that term should be actually. <laughs> well, I didn't oh, say that. oh, yeah. No, <laughs> I don't know if that's like become I mean, but... like not a okay term. <laughs> so far, so good, I guess, right? Yeah. So yeah. A lot of things change. Uh, I, I do miss LA though. So it, it's been a year since I kind of left LA last March too. So I kind of, all my friends are like, oh yeah, it's like 70, 80. I'm like, damn, you know, <laughs> miss that weather and things to do, but hopefully I'll be out there soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, so nice out here. I know. It's like, I, I just, if that feels like a century ago to me too, like, oh wow, a March with like 70 degree weather. What? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm like, I'm a like, born and raised New Yorker. That's so right. this is only my second win- winter out here and I love it. You know, I get to choose my snow. I can go, I can go to it. I can go to snow. I can yeah, go yeah. cold. Yeah. Big but bear or whatever it. mammoth, you know? you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice change for me. Have you gone back to, to New York since or? Um, last August, uh, I went back east with with my boyfriend he's from pennsylvania so we went to pennsylvania and upstate new york i didn't go to new york city um i didn't i didn't like with everything we didn't know if there was like borders were going to be closed we were kind of confused with everything and we just didn't want to like hurt ourselves in that position so we um went to go see mom's set obviously we got tested and everything there Mm -hmm. and before getting there when we got back and stuff like that your family's still out there right my mom and my dad are still in oh, New York. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, the whole family is sort of spread all over the place, though. 
<laughs> oh yeah, well that makes right. it difficult now. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. So. Wow. Uh, you know, I'm going to, this movie was wild. <laughs> I mean, you talk about a world, it, it felt kind of realistic, like this isolating world. Like we've been in these situations over the past year where you can't see anyone or do anything. So kind of hit close to home in certain instances, but damn, <laughs> you know, the, the, the post op apocalyptic worlds are kind of starting to resonate more so than ever, you know? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, it was also like very serendipitous on the fact that it like, came out during all of this yeah when this wasn't even a blip when we shot it so i was wondering um, when you guys filmed this we filmed this in the spring of 2018 oh okay so it's been a couple yeah. of years now yeah it's been a, it's been a little while yeah 2018 2017 where did you guys film that the film at i'm kind of curious where... um so we filmed in upstate new york in columbia okay. county like Hudson, Philmont, Chatham. So oh, okay. that's, um, I partially grew up there for my mom moved up there when we were high, when I was up. She wasn't in high school, I was. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in high school, my mom moved us up to, or me up to Chatham, New York. And that area is awesome. It was awesome to film there, like to film near home. Yeah, and, what is that like? That's your like basically backyard in a sense to yeah. make a movie and you're in a you know in your familiar it was, grounds. It was awesome. Actually, in the bar scene is like most of Chatham <laughs> in that <laughs> in that bar scene. And you know, I'm the friends that I'm talking to are my actual like best friends. Oh and my god, no so way. <laughs> it's actually really fun that you know, you know, it was fun for them too to be able to be on screen with me and to act like to act with me and um for that scene we needed extras so I was contacting everybody You're just calling up all your friends we right all, all day I'm like hey guys like you want to actually act with me we need like some extras for this bar scene and all day I'm texting people no one's really getting back to me and then I'm like there's free beer and yeah. they're like see you in five minutes <laughs> <laughs> I took like a flock of people there right when we needed so we got like the me and Adam moments that uh -huh. are like by himself and then with the people you know it was like there's free alcohol if you come and be an extra but um they all did great you know it made the scene <laughs> you might not get authentic. paid but you might get drunk so that's that's the selling point right there yeah yeah there was like a bit when we we're like okay you know like be quiet <laughs> that <laughs> is so this. awesome this is actually a bar right now <laughs> That is so amazing. What a what a kind of story to to hold on to for the rest of your career, you know? Not many yeah. will get to say in this industry, like, yeah, I filmed in my hometown with a bunch of people I know, you know, and made a movie out of it, you know? Exactly. Yeah, no, I'm very fortunate for that. Oh, that's so cool. That you see these got kind of tidbits behind the scenes you just don't know when you watch a movie, you know? Mm -hmm. What attracted you to the script initially? Because because it's cool. It's a cool kind of. I always I'm drawn to these kind of imaginative, you know, movies with kind of like these futuristic concept or post apocalyptic sort of things. Because it's it's something you kind of always envision in your mind, but don't know how it's gonna happen. And then you know, <laughs> a movie kind of gives you an idea of it. What what do you remember from uh, initially reading the script or kind of drew you into it? Um. Well. Alex Knapp, mm -hmm. his girlfriend, I've known her since we were children through our parents. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so she reached out to me on behalf of him at first saying like, my boyfriend wrote the script and he would love to reach out to you about it. Is that okay? And I was like, that's totally fine. You know, have him send it to me. Mm -hmm. And so I read it and I really liked it. You know, it's just, it was written in a way that really immersed you into the world, into like the scenery, the beauty, and also knowing that it's shooting upstate, I could really put it into my yeah. brain of like, you know, the Hudson Valley, which is just so beautiful. Um, so it was, and I noticed that like, you know, he was really immersed into just sticking in time and like really feeling moments. And I really liked it. and the idea of it and everything. So then we ended up talking about it and we were on the same page and clicked with everything. And, 
yeah i mean i wanted to do it from the get-go <laughs> well yeah i mean um, you had the built-in factors there all over the place yeah so and it was just i'm so happy that i got to be a part of it and that's doing so well and that people yeah. love it well he, we're talking <laughs> about it right so yeah. it's, it's coming across you know the cool thing it's what is it like kind of to work not only with someone that's your co-star in the film that you're doing scenes with but also that's a writer and director like you get that firsthand really experience that you with, with the actor version of it and also as the the behind the scenes person of it how much in in a sense did i benefit or you know you as an actor to have your your director and writer to to be your also your your co-star your person you kind of uh, do scenes with and build off of um i i like it um i like it and i have to say like i've been able to uh experience that on, on different sets and stuff like that where the director is also the actor and, well not the writer but um mm -hmm. you know like uh, working on the deuce and stuff like that but and I, I've always liked it, but I have to say, like Alex and the fact that this is an Indian, and this was his first one, he did such a good job of like all of it that he's on such a professional note, like right up there with like James Franco of like, mm. you know, in my mind of like doing it really well. Like, I don't know, it helped that we clicked a lot. So there was you know, we were on the same page. So, but he, yeah, I, I think it benefits me as an actor because also with them acting and directing, they see different nuances and moments that might need tweaking because mm -hmm. they're in it. They're right. in it, they're feeling it, you know? So then it's like, all right, let's try this. And, you know, let's like change this a little. Let's get this feeling out instead of like, just looking for the screen. It's like, this is what I want to capture, but I might not know how you know, if like you're not acting and it's like, no, no, no maybe this is like the emotion we're trying to do. collaboration. So yeah. The collaboration yeah. And the fact that like you grew up with his girlfriend to that personal, uh, you know, connection that you can't, you can't replicate that too. that comfort. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that you would have with someone that you have a closer relationship in that sense. Well, actually Alex and I met for this. I had not met, I hadn't met Alex. They've been together for years and I had it. Oh, wow. So uh, well, meet my so, boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, so we, we've kind of, yeah, this was our initial like meeting and bringing together. Wow. That's yeah. unbelievable. So basically your yeah. friend got this, this casting together in that sense, his girlfriend. Yeah, Fiona, girlfriend. Fiona did a good job. She did a good job. <laughs> totally. In that sense. You know, it's it's interesting because because I just literally interviewed uh, a former co-star of yours, Danny Zavato, right? Um, <laughs> yo, yep. Danny, I love Zavato. <laughs> he's a blast. He he's he is. <laughs> And it was funny because we were kind of reminiscing about It Follows, you know, and it, it, it's interesting because it's so many years have actually gone by, you know, you, you've done so much work since that, that movie. That was my first movie. That's crazy. Ever. Yeah. That's crazy. And uh, me and him talked about it, what a, he was just saying, what a blast and kind of fun ride it was and how, how much you guys so enjoyed hanging out with each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was amazing. It was a lot of fun. Sorry. Yeah. Tell me. Oh. I mean, he was saying the same thing. I want to know what you guys actually did because he was saying like the best thing about the experience was just hanging out with you guys and, and how much a blast you guys had and didn't even realize oh, you were making such a, a, blast. a hell of a I, movie. Um, well, my room was like the hangout room. <laughs> <laughs> I had my friend living with me in my room too. Oh my God. I told my friend, I was like, hey, I'm going to be in Detroit. I heard you move there. And he's like, yeah, totally. You need to ride from the airport. I'm like, yeah. So he picks me up from the airport and he's like, like, he drops me off at the hotel. I was like, so what are you saying? He's like, this, this chair looks good. And I'm like, <laughs> what? You're going to live in like my recliner chair? And he's like, can I? I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm not paying for the room. Oh, sure. God. But he was like my built-in maid. Um, so he would like, I would like go to set, he, I would wake up and he's like sitting on the chair, like lighting on the chair like this. And I'd wake up and he would like stock the fridge and clean the room. And okay. it was great. And we all loved him. And it was all of us just like had such a blast. 
That is so it's unbelievable. And, and it, it, you know what? So really good friends with Pierre Gilchrist too. It, it resonated with yeah. all of you, Danny, you, it's like that, that experience, it seems. And, and the cool thing, it's like so many of you have gone on to do some great things too. You know, Micah was there. I mean, it just it, like, everyone's kind of had a career after that movie too, you know, the way it came out. So it's cool to, to see where mm -hmm. all of you ventured off too afterwards, you know? Uh, but did you know that yeah. it was going to turn out to be such kind of like a cult hit that when you guys were making it, cause, uh, it really turned out to be nope. a, what did Danny say? He had Danny no damn idea. He's just like, we were just having fun. We were, we were we just, were just hanging having out, fun. having fun. We didn't know what we were doing. And then this movie came out and people are actually like talking about it. Yeah. We were like, there's like, this is cool. And it's such a great time and a fun movie, but it's a movie about a sexually transmitted goat, like ghost. It's never going to go anywhere. Yeah. And then it did become so big and people love it so much. And it was one of the best experiences of my life. Yeah, I mean, I, I owned the 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 DVD for it. I actually watched it recently too. After I talked to Danny, I'm like, I gotta check it out again. So, uh, it's, so it's, it's so fun. I mean, that that's so cool to hear that. It, it clearly, you guys had fun. It resonated with everyone. You know, do you guys I jumped keep... in that pool? Uh -huh. That yeah, was the a pool. fun thing. Because I love to swim, and you have a shooting in a pool for like three days, and I can't like touch it for like. And also like, I'm like, I didn't like lifeguard training when I was younger. So it's also like, oh, okay. I know how to, I know how to swim. Let me get like, just for lunch. Let me just like swim a little bit. But then we were finally done shooting on like the last day and it was actually <laughs> Halloween. So I dressed up in a tutu right here oh, and, filming, <laughs> and I ran and I ran right into the pool and they're like, Olivia. And I was like, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. I just need to do once. I just had to in do once. Like, I had to, what? You, did, you jumped in, in the tutu? Yeah, I jumped in the minute too. too. Oh Please tell me there's like pictures of this or visual proof somewhere. I'd love. There's a picture of me in the tutu, but I. Somewhere I have no clue where. I've broken so many phones and hard drives since then <laughs> that there's a lot of lost. Oh, that pool was huge, from memories. what I remember. Was it as big in person as it was on screen? It came out. Yeah, it was a huge pool. Yeah, was it at like some like high school or something? Where did you guys film that scene? Uh, it was a high school in Michigan. That works. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> in Michigan, <laughs> right? They have plenty of space out there, so yeah. they have it's, large pools and high schools out there. Yeah, it's somewhere in the suburbs of Detroit. Yep. I can't That's remember. That's so cool. That's awesome. Do you guys still stay in touch uh, together or do you talk to each other or run into each other? Um, yeah, we, we do. I haven't seen Micah in a while, but I did another film with Micah after everything. Mm -hmm. Um, with her and Jeremy Allen White. Yeah. So I did, I did that with her a few years ago. I haven't seen her in a while, but Kier and I are still good friends. He lives in LA as well. Mm-hmm. We've stayed in contact, um, but you know, with COVID and everything, we haven't seen much of each other because we're being safe. Right. Um, and Danny, I haven't seen in a while, but I miss that kid so much. Oh. I thought I saw him the other day, but I was like, no, this is like Danny from like six years ago that I'm seeing. This isn't like, you know, it's just a doppelganger of six years ago, Danny, not like <laughs> present day Danny. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> He's doing well. So uh, <laughs> he's just chilling these days, seems like. Mm -hmm. well, hopefully making art. Yeah, no, no that. question. He just did a movie um, recently and, and I talked to him and the director. Ah, what's the name of the, I just saw, it was, it was a really cool, I mean, he's been doing Penny Dreadful too. Mm -hmm. uh, also he did that. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, he's been in a bunch of stuff, but I'm trying to get the name of the movie. Flinch, Flinch is what he did last. And he plays like this hitman, and it's it's awesome, you know? <laughs> it's called Flinch. He plays a like this like crazy hitman who like lives with his mom and like they're like he kidnaps this woman who's seen him do a crime and like it's weird I'm and he starts like falling out. in love with her. It's it's an insane script and, and it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, but he plays this like cold like hitman sniper that lives with his mom you know and the mom's like <laughs> like hiding his crimes and stuff it's unbelievable <laughs> it's so yeah, much fun flinch 
Yeah, Flinch. Flinch is Flinch. the name of it. It just released. Uh, I, like, yeah, I talked to him like a month or so ago. So, yeah, so probably yeah, on, on digital and on on demand. So <laughs> available somewhere. <laughs> yeah, available somewhere if you find it. You know, yeah. the crazy thing is you've been part of like two really like big shows in the deuce and orange is the new black like and, and those are completely kind of different stories in a lot of ways but also there's that I, I think there's a similarity in it too you know from a from a viewer's perspective um tell me what those experiences kind of meant to you and not only your career just but but being part of such you know great casts and and also people who behind the scenes on it but just also interesting shows with interesting concepts too um it's been amazing um the whole experience of being a part of those uh i actually just rewatched orange is the new black during quarantine mm. <laughs> in the past year <laughs> there you go. um that and i mean that show is so monumental yeah on the light that it sheds on such a corrupt system um and i'm so happy to be a part of that <laughs> wish i didn't play a racist <laughs> but what? it resonates I now i mean i think that show was a little bit ahead of its time don't you think a, mm -hmm. a few years now that like what's gone on in a world this show is even more highlights what what you guys were trying to say and do you know well, during or, i remember i remember the day after the orange one got elected Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> a nice play in words too <laughs> with, with the yeah. show's theme <laughs> oh i didn't even think about yeah, that yeah like clever there <laughs> <laughs> but um when when he got elected the next day i was on set mm. and it was one of the saddest days on set i've ever experienced really because it's a whole cast and crew of people of color Mm -hmm. women of all you know sexualities men of all sexualities all types of sexualities and like you know like genders and stuff like that so we're all so diverse and all affected by that that yeah. it was really one of the saddest days and you know playing the characters that we had to play too I remember I was with um Asia and Francesca and um Kelly, who we played, you know, that gross little group. Uh -huh. Um, all of us were like, you don't want to play this character today. <laughs> like this character is too close to like what's happening right now. We don't want to play this at the moment. But um uh -huh. that being said, <laughs> it was a sad day on set. Uh it was amazing to be a part of that show. And I'm like forever grateful for that. And because of the first episode I did of Orange is New Black and the fact that they wrote me back which is like right awesome. that's, that's a big that's a big compliment that's in a itself. huge thing mm -hmm. um but the first episode I did Jodie Foster was directing wow. and because of interacting with her on that was one of the reasons that I got Money Monster because she told me that like she was like when I saw your tape I was like hey her, her. I remember wow. her I liked her and so then I got Money Monster for that. So it was like the beginning of, you know, the beginning of it all, I guess. It was still the very beginning of my um, career. Yeah, in your career, right. Yeah. And then the Deuce, I love those people so much. They're like family to me. And that experience was so life-changing for me and also I grew so much as an actor on that set and learning mm. and everyone from like the writers to the gaffers to directors to the actors like everyone on that crew and cast was it was one of the best ever wow yeah, sorry to any other show I work on <laughs> or you know it's like they're they were really, really fantastic. And it was amazing being on that show for as long as I was. And, you know, them writing my character into an arc in the third season too was 
Yeah, you've had a nice run there. That's that's also mm-hmm. to be part of it, you know, continually. That which is that's that's awesome. You can only dream of that as an actor, you know, to, yeah. to extend it in several seasons to be part of the m- main cast, you know, which you were. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. I always wondered. I I don't know if this is a rumor or true, but right by Santa Monica Beach, there's I think like a bar or like a motel, and they keep on saying that's where the Deuce is filmed. I heard like three people tell me that. Uh, or it's based on, or May, something. maybe because in the third season they did spend time in LA, but I wasn't a part of those shoots because I was uh-huh. still in New York. I, that I, was the only. But we shot that in New York, like Silver Cup Studios. All of all of your stuff was in New York, right? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Okay, good to but know. But there that. was, the, like I said, in the third season there are clips because um, Emily Mead's character, mm-hmm. she is in LA. Right. So, like, I actually right around. The corner from my place, there's a scene. I was like totally about to give away my address. <laughs> right around the corner from my place, there was um a uh, like a scene shot there, and I recognized. I was like, hey, hey, I'm on that wall. Like, <laughs> well, that's <laughs> it's weird, right? Sometimes when you live in LA and you watch like shows and films, you're like this is my neighborhood, you know? Yeah. I, I remember I was living at a place in North Hollywood, and across the street, um, the bar in um in La La Land that, um, uh, that Gus oh. Link's character, uh, you know, later at the end of the movie, um, oh God, I forgot the name of that, uh, C- something with Sibby's or something like that. It was, um, it was the name I'm of sure that bar. That, La La yeah. It, it was across the street from where I lived. It was like a comic book <laughs> store turned into like Sibs, I think, or whatever it was in the movie. I'm like, this looks <laughs> familiar. Every day I would stare across the street from it and I'm like, like, Oh my God. How. Huh? <laughs> Like wondering how it looks familiar. Like, why do you look familiar? Yeah, right. and it's just like, wait, is the comic book store? But like, this looks so similar to that thing from Law. And someone's like, yeah, they filmed it here like a year ago. I'm like, well, before I moved there, interesting. So <laughs> it, it's crazy how like you live in LA or something like something's right in front of your place or outside the corner. You know, like an iconic monument or, or a movie scene. You know, I um I had where I lived in Fort Greene, Brooklyn. Um there were so many things that were shot in our building and cause it's like a beautiful old um, apartment building in like the middle of Fort Greene, Clinton Hill. And one time I brought like, I brought a friend over who's also an actress and she was like, why does this look so familiar? Why does this look so familiar? Like walking up and I was like, because you literally for one of your things shot just one scene here. Like you actually like collapsed on these steps crying. And she's like, oh, that's it. <laughs> but it was so many years ago. She's like, that's it. Huh. And I was like, yeah, that's that, that's why. And that's I remember awesome. when I first saw it, I was like, hey, I know that I know that. I know yeah. that. And and did you ever get a notice on like your door? It's like, oh, filming might take place in this location or something, right? In like New they York, put it, yeah. And, and yeah, in LA, I had that too, and in that one of my places, and, and and it's just like I had a notice, like filming might take place from this. I'm like, where? Outside my door, you know, like in my hallway where I get my mail from my mailbox. Like it's so wild. I'm like, what do I do then? Can I come out of my place or like, you know, you kind of don't know what to do, and they're like giving you Sometimes notices you on your. <laughs> like I in Brooklyn, there was another time that um, they were filming. I want to say the blind spot. Uh huh. And like said, the show. Um, but anyway, it was hours in the middle of the night, like, and I had to work the next day too. Oh, no. <laughs> so it's all night, just like bang, 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 like open up, please. So, but I'm talking about like too many hours for these angles and shots to be taking place. Like, yeah, you know, I literally gave them like three and a half hours, and I literally went outside. I'm like, when can you move on? to the next setup because you should have gotten this banging shot. Like, you know, it's it's a two second shot. Like, right. and I was also like throwing around lingo, like I have to be on set in the morning too. My wall is right here. You're banging right here. Like I- I know how this works. I didn't write yeah. down my place. <laughs> like, <laughs> please. Like, I'm sorry. But it, can you, is there a way to like move to the next setup soon? Ugh. Can you give me like, an ETA on that and they're like they did they actually stopped like shortly after 
It was just like, you know, it's the middle of the night, I get it. But how many angles do you need of the banging shot? Same. One of the people up there in the hand, then the person coming up from the other side. You don't need the banging for it. No. From the other side. <laughs> like safety like, shots, right? For safety is safety shots, right? They're gonna call it that. It was hours. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Unbelievable. Like, you guys are going slow. <laughs> it's like if <laughs> this is your problem. Wow. But yeah. What do you like to do for fun? I'm curious, like when you're not acting, when you're away from it, um, you know, now you're living out in LA, what are some things, I guess, pre COVID, because now we can't pretty much do anything, but what are some of your hobbies and interests? Um, pre COVID was hanging out with friends. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, normally in post during COVID, you know, now, yeah. but uh, I do photography. Oh, um, right. I do little art things. Like I've been working with a lot of epoxy resin over re like over quarantine, uh -huh. like making like ashtrays and a lot of coasters. Wow. Um, yeah. So, and then like watercoloring and I also do photography. So I've been trying to keep busy creatively. Oh, that's I watch funny. a lot of TV. That's, that's <laughs> a hobby. A lot of TV. Do you do photography just like what certain things you like to shoot? Uh, is it like for your personal, just kind of like a collage and, and portfolio or what sort of things you like to go out and shoot? Um, a little bit of everything. I always said like my photography, like um, mission statement mm -hmm. was like trying to catch, capture the beauty in everyday things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, from a certain angle, like, this post might look cool of this fence and just like seeing it and so it's you know it's pictures of my fr friends or landscapes or broken phone booths are cool uh -huh. like broken things abandoned things I don't know like whatever I think is kind of something that's thought provoking right. like that. Like I would think if I saw a cool picture, it, it depends on the lighting and resolution of it. Like, Oh, a broken phone booth or, or even like you find like a broken, you know, like those telephone boots that they had before, you know, where you were like, you'd call mm -hmm. the, you know, in, in public, you throw in a few quarters in and you're calling someone like the dial, uh, the ones that we don't have anymore, but like, Oh, wow. I remember that times. Like it makes you imagine things, you know, when you kind of take pictures of, random kind of normal objects but it, it yeah object has a history you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah and a story I'm like let's see if i have any like photos right in my room but i don't have that any that's cool taken. though yeah that's cool yeah. I, that that's a cool creative outlet to have you know especially um you know it's, it's funny because i <laughs> That's a whole other story. I, I actually went to a like a psychic. My sister convinced me to go like a week ago, and uh, he told me he's like, "Did you ever try a, like photojournalism?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> I'm like, "I can barely take like a picture with my phone." Uh, and he's like, "You'd be really good at it." I'm like, "Oh, okay." And now I'm like thinking about it. I should be like taking pictures of things. Hey, maybe. Yeah. You never know. If yeah. it's in the skies, it might be real. Hey, he also said it's going to be my best dating life ever. So we'll see about that. I'm, I'm skeptical. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm right. kind of skeptical and, and not believing that fact. But uh, <laughs> well, I guess we'll see, you know. He's like, oh, yeah, money's coming your way. I'm like, great, where, you know? <laughs> when? <laughs> yes, when. I would like it soon, <laughs> you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess some of these crazy, it's more opened up here in Chicago. So I'm able to do something crazy like that, but hell it's an experience yeah. and a story at least. Right. At the end of the day. Hey, I mean, why not? It's something different. Yeah. Apparently yeah. It worked for my sister. So something came true, you know? So I'm like, oh, well, let me try. At least you went in person. Like my mom will do like psychics over the phone. I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, yeah, right. I don't get it. No, like your voice is not that features, powerful. That's not real. Uh huh. Yeah. It was. It was actually pretty nice, honestly. Like 
he was like at this elderly man's ha- home. He had his cute little Yorkie. And like, it was like no cards, no voodoo. We just sat by a table and chatted. Then we started talking about the orange man. And he was like showing me like YouTube clips of like comedy sketches, uh, poking fun at him. So I'm like, this is, it's like a, actually a fun time I've had with someone much less like a like, psychic, you know, we're just like chilling <laughs> and talking. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wow. It's been so much fun talking to you. I'm so glad I had a chance to connect with you. And, you know, when this came across, I'm like, yes, I want to talk to her. I've been such a big fan and I've seen you in several shows and films. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a great opportunity. And you couldn't have been any better, you know, and more enjoyable. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you again for pushing a little bit for me. For for me and my windshield. (laughs) Yes, you got to get that windshield done, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Fix that. But you know what? One thing I don't want you to fix I love the gap in your tooth. I think that gives I'll you never so fix much. That. You can't. It, it's like such a personal. It, it, it's you. You know what I mean. So it, it, yeah. it sets you apart. You know. So I feel. Yeah. Like, it'll like, never. It'll never change. Everyone that has a gap should own their gap. If you yes. have a gap, and seeing this, own it. Yes. It makes you beautiful and different. And I, I know, like you when that. I was younger, I wanted it gone. Mm-hmm. And you know, cause you're taught that like you should have straight teeth and like stuff like that. So my teeth are straight. They just gap. Yeah. But, um, you know, but I think people should own it and when you get older, you realize it like it's so just, sad when kids are like, I hate my gap. I'm like, don't hate it. Right. It, you it, it, you're going to love it. People are going to love it. Yes. Kids can I, be I, assholes, I think that... You know, but uh, you know, when they grow up, they're fine. And they're not going to be fun to you exactly no it's you it's part of you it's unique you know and it's kind of your trademark too so uh, i'm glad that you're owning it and keeping it because a lot of people are like oh i'm in movies i'm in holiday i gotta look perfect like no the imperfections are the perfections at the end you know my dentist tries to get me to get like veneers all the time like veneers I'm like no i'm no. okay just fix the bonding because i have like a chip tooth and i'm just there you, you know. go <laughs> i love it hard times in italy break well, your teeth I'm just keep being you I, I i that's the best part about you you're authentic it comes off even in, in your roles and on screen and uh it, this is so much fun olivia thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and i hope we can catch up again down the road and talk about some more stuff coming your way definitely definitely and see some of those pictures too hopefully you have some on hand i like to see your photography um i do have an instagram uh mm-hmm. for my photography and it's o period Blue Cardi period photography. Oh, okay. I rarely update it, but it's there. Uh, It's there. I'm just collecting the portfolio, and then one day I'll probably get drunk and like do a bunch of posts or something like that. Yes, (laughs) there's a reason for that. (laughs) Well, I'll check it out for sure. So, um, thank you. Take care, stay safe, and uh, and and have fun, and keep on doing good stuff. Thank you. You too, and stay warm. In Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually it's <laughs> gonna right, get warm. <laughs> hey, I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Bye Olivia. Take care.